This is part one of, I think, a three-part or maybe four-part series on modeling a spyglass and a magnifying glass. And the goal is to model these in Blender and then to bring them into Substance Painter and do some very, very basic texturing. To bring those textures back into Blender and put them on, add a map, and make a little render of this. It's for relative beginners, all right? You just have to know your way around the interface. It's not gonna be complicated or anything like that. I'm providing this reference image. This is on um, the ZeroBio Discord server. I'll leave a link to that. And all you would do is if you go there, you just click on this, open the original, and then save the image. And then you can follow along with me if you like, or you can do it on your own. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm over here in Blender 2.8. So maybe some of the shortcut keys are a bit different if you've got a more modern version, I'm not sure. So I'm looking from top-down orthographic. I'm going to go Shift-A, and I'm going to bring in that reference image. I've got this arrow. If you don't, you just click here, okay? If you don't see that arrow, you click here. Click that, because what I want to do is I want to turn that off so I can't select my reference image. My 3D cursor is right in the middle. Uh, what I'm going to do, I think, is click over here and click somewhere in the middle of that. I'm going to zoom in and get it relatively in the center. It doesn't matter that that much. Come back to here. I've got my 3D cursor right in the middle there, and I'm going to bring in a cylinder. And I think I'm going to go for 24 vertices and choose nothing for the cap fill. And that way it'll look open. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to rotate X90, look down from the top. I'm going to press Z and go into wireframe, and I'm going to scale it again. I'll move it up here, and what I want to do is I want to get this pretty much to match the diagram, the width right there. Okay, and that's, that's good for me. I might even actually pull it up to there. Okay, so I'm in wireframe mode. That's important. I'm going to press B for box select. I'm going to grab all these. That'll select all of the vertices. And I'm going to pull them down here. I'm going to press E to extrude. Bring it down to here and then press S to scale out to there. Now underneath this area, there's a flat section. So I'm going to come down just a little bit more. E to extrude and come out straight. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, come out a bit more and S to scale down like that. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment and let's turn this and have a look. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, this is where you're going to put your eye and this is sort of why I included this diagram here. We've done this part. So now what I think I will do is I'm going to shift alt and click there to select that and I'm going to press, uh, let's see what we want to do. How about E and S? come in a little bit flat like that e let's pull it back but let's go s or just pull it in and that's where your eye is going to go i'm going to put a, a piece of glass there in a minute so i'm going to press e and come in a little bit more let's just have a look at that okay that could work fine like that seven to look from here Okay, now this piece, as you can see, slides under the next. So this is a separate piece here. So to make that, I'm going to go into edit mode, shift alt and click that row of vertices. I can go back into wireframe. And I'm going to shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to pull them out, press P, and separate by selection. Go back into object mode, select that, object, set origin to geometry, go into edit mode, and A to select. I'm going to pull this back here. I'm going to make it a little bit wider than this piece because this piece would go in. And I'm going to start making this E to extrude. Pull it up to there. S to scale. E to extrude will make that flat region. E to extrude will come up to here. Scale it in. And then we're going to make a straight cylinder up to here. Right up to there. That will be the end of that piece. Now, something I want to mention, I'm going to go back to solid view and I'm going to hide the empty. I don't want a sharp part right here for this. 
So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to shift alt and click that part there. And I'm going to press E and S and bring it down like that. And that's probably going to be fine like that. So it looks closed off. All right. Top view again. Turn on the empty. And we're going to make this final piece here and then this one here. Now, there is something that I should mention. And that is, I want to make this wood. And I want to make these pieces metal. And so this is actually going to be a separate piece. So I think I'm going to build it as a separate piece. So right now, all I'm going to model is this. Make sure nothing is selected. Shift Alt and click there. Shift D. Pull this out. P to break it out. Go into object mode. Set the origin of geometry on that. Go back into edit mode. There we go. I'm going to pull it back. Just like before, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. E. Come up to here. Scale it out. E and come forward for a flat region. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't match the diagram perfectly. Now, like I said, I'm going to make this as a separate piece. So I think what I'll do here is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to come forward a little bit. And I'm going to scale it in a little bit. And then I'm going to go E and S and just do that. Okay. Now I need to do more work here, of course. So let's take that E and S and just pull it in like that. So that's my piece right there. Sort of similar to this one here. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit different. That's okay. Okay, so let's go in. Shift Alt and click maybe that row. Shift D to duplicate. Pull it out. We're going to make this part. P to break it out. Select it again. Set the origin of geometry. Go into edit mode. I can go back into wireframe. I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. Pull this so it would go under. I'm going to push it under. And E to extrude. And we're going to come up to about here. All right. And now I want to make this piece. I'm going to use this circle. Shift D. Pull it out. P to break it out. And select that. Go into edit mode. Scale it bigger. I'm going to pull it back so it's overlapping this piece. The piece that's going to be wood. E to extrude. And I'm just going to pull that out like that. All right, so I don't have a diagram showing how this front piece would go. I'm going to go into solid view. So I'm just going to make this up. I'm going to go E and S and come in. And we're going to go E and we're going to pull back. And that's going to be it, I think. I'll put a piece of glass there, so I'm not going to worry about that any more than that. Okay, but we need to close this off. So shift alt and click that row, E and S, pull it down in. No one's going to see very far into there anyhow. Let's go ahead and hide the empty, save our work. So we should now have this piece. And by the way, it's a good idea to set the origin of geometry on all of them. This piece, they'll just put it in the middle. We have that separate piece. I got that piece. And I got that piece. All right, it's time to smooth this out. So I'm going to select this. Come over to the Modifier tab, Add Modifier, Subdivision Surface, and I bring that up to 2. Right-click and Shade Smooth. Go into Edit Mode now, and Control-R, click and drag an edge loop close, but not on top of those other vertices. Do another one, pull it down roughly the same distance, like that. Click, drag up near the top of that one, to about there over to here, over to here, down here, down here, and let's go have a look at that and see what it looks like. We have some relatively sharp ends. I don't want this to be too sharp. This is where you would put your eye. So I think that's going to be okay. So let's move on to the next part. Instead of going to the modifier tab, let's just go control two. Now it'll put two subdivisions. Shade smooth. Come in. Control R. Slide an edge loop very close to these other vertices. This is a piece of metal uh, here. And then we'll put an edge loop like this. Slide it close to that side there. And close to this side here. 
and I think we're going to need one coming down like that. Okay, and let's slide one down here. And that's probably good enough. Let's select that and go H to hide it and just look at this lip. And I don't think I need it any sharper. Alt H to bring that back. I'm happy with that, but let's hide the picture. All right, let's come up to here, select this piece, Control 2, and Shade Smooth. Let's go in and do a similar thing. And edge loop down here, and edge loop up there, over here, over here. And we'll probably need another one. Hide that piece. Um, I'm going to put one in anyhow. And I'm going to leave it like that. Bring everything back. Now this piece is going to be wood. But I'm going to go Control 1 and Shade Smooth anyhow. I think it'll look a bit better than if I just shaded it smooth. And finally the top piece here. Control 2, Shade Smooth. An edge loop over here. An edge loop over here. I think I'll drag one up there. We'll drag one up here and probably one down there. It doesn't have to be too tight. I think that's going to be fine. Our piece of glass is going to be in front of there. Um, it's debatable if we maybe would like to do the following. Put an edge loop, bring it close to the front. I'm going to press 2 to go into just the edge selection. And then I'm going to go Control B to bevel and pull. Roll your mouse down so there's no lines in between. And then go E and Alt S and pull. Edge loop on this side and an edge loop on that side. And that might look good. I don't know, but I've done it, so we'll see. All right, let's put the piece of glass in here now. Let's come back and select here. Let's select a circle, maybe one of these inside ones. Shift Alt and click there. Shift D, pull it out. P to break it out. Go back into object mode and select it. Set the origin of geometry and let's get rid of the subdivision surface. We're not gonna need that. Go into edit mode, select it, press F to make face and pull it back to where you would like to have that. Maybe around there and S to scale just so it goes into the walls for sure. So there's my glass. And then let's take that piece, set the origin of geometry again, we moved it, and let's duplicate it, Shift D, and bring it up to the front here. Go to edit mode, and we can look from, there, where's the front? Control one, I guess, is the front. And we can scale this up until it hits the walls. Actually, we'll pull it back in. There we go, somewhere in that vicinity. So we have the glass uh, as well in there. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Uh, a little bit more, though, that we need to do. Um, I'm going to look from three to the side. These flat areas, I'm going to be putting something on there. Let's bring back the empty and just look from the top. So you can see it, these little teeth-like structures. All right, so look from the side again. And I'm going to select this, go into edit mode, press 3 for face selection, shift alt and click that whole row of polys, shift s, cursor to select it. That'll bring the 3D cursor right in the middle of this row. It may not look like it, but it is there. With that there, I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, Circle, and I'm going to choose 64. Go into Edit Mode in 1 so I can see my vertices and scale it down a bit. I'm then going to rotate X90 so it wraps right around, and I can look from the front. All right, just on an angle is a little bit better. S to scale. I don't want it inside. I want a little bit of space there. All right, I'm going to look from the side now, and I'm going to pull this over to just to right around the edge. E to extrude, pull it out to right around the edge, so it looks kind of even. Select it and just have a look at that. Okay, I'm going to extrude it back in. The way I'm going to do that is go um, E and Alt S, and I am going to pull down. Now, if I go into wireframe those faces, I can press 3, 
those faces are not going to be seen. So I'm going to go X faces to get rid of them. Back into solid view, and I've got this sort of band on there. What I'm going to do now is go back in, in three face selection, shift alt and click right there, and I'm going to press I twice, I, I, and then pull my mouse in, and that will create little sort of squares. You can hold shift to move a bit slower. Choose a size that you like, like that. Then I'm going to press E and Alt S, and I'm going to pull down, and that's going to push them out. Push them out a little ways like this, not too far. And then switch over to individual origins and press S and just push your mouse in. And that will scale each of them individually. Good enough. Deselect, go back into object mode and come over to the modifiers and choose bevel. I'm going to go to, for two segments. I'm going to turn this to angle and this to arc and shade smooth. And that's what I'm going to have there. Okay. Now, from the side view, I'm going to select this, and I, I'm, yeah, that's this one. Shift D to duplicate it, drag it out to here, to roughly where it would be positioned, turn to the side and go S and hold Shift to move slower till they start to poke through, and you get something like this. And I want this side to be similar to this, so I'm gonna scale it a bit more in. S, hold shift, and get it something similar. doesn't have to be exact. All right, cool. Let's do that again. Shift D, drag it out, look from the side, get it positioned. And we may need to widen this as well. I might want to go S, Y, pull it out, and position it. And I might do that for this one too. And now, S, hold down shift, It'll scale it out to about there. Yeah, I might scale in the Y a little bit. I may have popped out a little bit too. Yeah, that's fine. Just position it where you like it, where you feel comfortable with it. How's this one? Don't want to go anymore? I don't think so. Okay, this is a bigger piece, so it's got bigger teeth. And that's it for that, actually. Now, um... There is something else that we need to do, however. We need to make sure none of our polys are flipped. And what I mean is, come over here and choose face orientation. You see the red? That means they're facing the wrong way. So I'm going to select all of these red pieces. Go into edit mode. A to select them all. Alt N. Recalculate outside. And that will flip the poly so they're facing the right way. This glass looks okay. But this class doesn't. And if I come in and I select it and I go Alt N, recalculate outside, it may work, or you may have to actually physically flip them. But we seem to be okay. So there is our spyglass modeled. Let's double check, look around it. Everything looks okay. And I just want to make a decision about this. If I like this, I think I'm okay with it. I think if I wanted to touch this up with a little bit more, what I would do is as I'm looking here, I see this nice flat edge here, and I don't see much of the flat edge there, and I think I'd like to work on that. So I'm gonna come in here. In fact, I'm gonna hide that piece. I'm gonna come in here. And the way I would fix this is I press two for edge selection, shift alt and click here and here, and I'm just gonna press S to scale. I'm gonna hold shift drag it out a bit more and I'll take you bring that stuff back hide the empty though and it's close the only other thing I think I need to do is sharpen this up maybe I'll bring an edge loop up here Let's see if that does the job I think it pretty much did I think they look a little bit better um, this edge loop here this one looks like it might be a little bit closer than this one and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to move this down. I'm going to press G, G, G twice. Slide it down closer. That'll sharpen that up. And it'll just look a little bit more, you know, I don't know, symmetrical or proper or whatever. All right, well, that's fine. 
that is going to be it for modeling the spy glass in the next video we'll come back and we'll model the magnifying glass and then in part three we'll look at texturing both of them